Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to tweak the ultimatum game by allowing the second player to propose a counteroffer if he doesn't like the first player's offer. To recall the story, Angelica and Tommy are trying to split a dozen cookies. Angelica makes a take it or leave it offer to Tommy. If Tommy accepts, then he gets that number of cookies, and Angelica gets the rest. But if he rejects, both get nothing. That gave us this extensive form, and we concluded that Angelica offers Tommy one cookie in equilibrium and gets to keep the other 11 for herself. But now Tommy can propose a counteroffer, which Angelica can either accept or reject, following the same rules that Tommy had before. And this is our somewhat daunting extensive form. Just to be clear, Angelica begins the game by offering Tommy X cookies. Tommy can accept that offer, reject that offer and end the game, or propose a counteroffer. If Tommy proposes a counteroffer, Angelica can either accept it or reject it. But however complicated that is, the good news is that we can still crack this game using backward induction. So let's start at the end, assuming Tommy had offered Angelica Y number of cookies. Angelica gets zero here for rejecting. Thus, to accept, Y will have to be greater than zero. That is, Tommy will have to offer her something. And we see here that Tommy does better by offering Angelica some number of cookies. For example, if he offered her 6, then she would accept and Tommy would get 6 more cookies than had Angelica rejected him. But we can also see that he does even better by only giving her 1 cookie and keeping the other 11 for himself. Angelica still has rational self-incentive to accept his offer. 1 cookie is better than 0. And so Tommy's subgame perfect offer here is to only give Angelica 1 cookie, just like in the single ultimatum version of the game that we went over last time. And for clarity, I'm just going to replace the Y with a 1. Now let's look and see if Tommy prefers making a counteroffer to rejecting. And we see that rejecting is a pretty silly strategy here for Tommy. He gets 0 for doing that, but 11 for continuing the game. So rejecting certainly isn't, isn't subgame perfect. Now we compare Tommy's payoffs for accepting Angelica's offer and proposing a counteroffer. This is where it gets kind of tricky. Tommy will reject any x less than 11. He's indifferent between accepting and proposing an offer when x equals 11 and he will definitely accept when x equals 12. So let's see if Angelica will offer 12 or not. Well, Tommy would accept in this case because 12 is greater than 11. But Angelica really doesn't like that outcome because she gets nothing out of it. She'll get zero cookies. Thus, she will not offer 12 cookies to Tommy. Now let's check some number less than 11. We'll make it 10. Here, Tommy prefers making a counteroffer because the 11 cookies he will ultimately get is better than accepting whatever Angelica offers him. We will have to keep this option in mind. Finally, we check to see what happens when x equals 11. Now Tommy is indifferent between accepting Angelica's offer and making a counteroffer. Note that the equilibrium payoffs here are equal when x was less than 11. Thus, there are a bunch of different ways that this game can play out. In equilibrium, Angelica can make any offer less than 12. If it is 11, Tommy can accept it or make a counteroffer of y equals 1, which Angelica will accept. These are both valid because they have the same conclusive payoffs. For any x less than 11, Tommy makes a counteroffer of y equals 1, which Angelica accepts. But no matter what happens, Tommy ends up with 11 cookies, and Angelica only gets 1. 